Article 6, He ascended into heaven, sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Importance of this article. Filled with the Spirit of God, and contemplating the blessed and glorious ascension of our Lord, the prophet David exhorts all to celebrate that splendid triumph with the greatest joy and gladness, clap your hands, all ye nations, shout unto God with ye voice of joy. God is ascended with jubilee. The pastor will hence learn that this mystery should be explained with the greatest diligence, and that he should take care that the people not only perceive it with faith and understanding, but that they also strive as far as possible, with the Lord's help to reflect it in their lives and actions. First part of this article, he ascended into heaven. With regard, then, to the exposition of this sixth article, which has reference principally to this divine mystery, we shall begin with its first part, and point out its force and meaning. Into heaven. This, then, the faithful must believe without hesitation, that Jesus Christ, having fully accomplished the work of redemption, ascended as man, body and soul, into heaven, for as God he never forsook heaven, filling as he does all places with his divinity. He ascended. The pastor is also to teach that he ascended by his own power, not being taken up by the power of another, as was Elias, who was carried to heaven in a fiery chariot, or, as the prophet Habakkuk, or Philip, the deacon, who were born through the air by the divine power, and traversed great distances. Neither did he ascend into heaven solely by the exercise of his supreme power as God, but also by virtue of the power which he possessed as man. Although human power alone was insufficient to accomplish this, yet the virtue with which the blessed soul of Christ was endowed was capable of moving the body as it pleased, and his body, now glorified, readily obeyed the behest of the soul that moved it. Hence, we believe that Christ ascended into heaven as God and man by his own power. Second part of this article, sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. The words he sitteth at the right hand of the Father form the second part of this article. In these words we observe a figure of speech, that is, a use of words in other than their literal sense, as frequently happens in Scripture, when, accommodating its language to human ideas, it attributes human affections and human members to God, who, spirit as he is, admits of nothing corporeal. At the right hand. As among men he who sits at the right hand is considered to occupy the most honorable place, so, transferring the same idea to celestial things, to express the glory which Christ as man has obtained above all others, we confess that he sits at the right hand of the Father. Sitteth. To sit does not imply here position and posture of body, but expresses the firm and permanent possession of royal and supreme power and glory which he received from the Father, and of which the Apostle says, raising him up from the dead, and setting him on his right hand in the heavenly places, above all principality, and power, and virtue, and domination, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and he hath subjected all things under his feet. These words manifestly imply that this glory belongs to our Lord in so special and exclusive a manner that it cannot apply to any other created being. Hence in another place the Apostle testifies, to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand. Reflections on the Ascension Its History The pastor should explain the sense of the article more at length by detailing the history of the Ascension, of which the evangelist St. Luke has left us an orderly description in the Acts of the Apostles. Greatness of this Mystery in this exposition he should observe, in the first place, that all other mysteries refer to the ascension as to their end and find in it their perfection and completion, for as all the mysteries of religion commence with the incarnation of our Lord, so his sojourn on earth terminates with his ascension. Moreover the other articles of the creed which regard Christ the Lord show his great humility and lowliness. Nothing can be conceived more humble, nothing more lowly than that the Son of God assumed our weak human nature, and suffered and died for us. But nothing more magnificently, nothing more admirably, proclaims his sovereign glory and divine majesty than what is contained in the present and in the preceding article, in which we declare that he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father. Reasons of the Ascension When the pastor has explained these truths, 
he should next accurately show why Christ the Lord ascended into heaven. First of all, he ascended because the glorious kingdom of the highest heavens, not the obscure abode of this earth, presented a suitable dwelling place for him whose body, rising from the tomb, was clothed with the glory of immortality. He ascended, however, not only to possess the throne of glory and the kingdom which he had merited by his blood, but also to attend to whatever regards our salvation. Again, he ascended to prove thereby that his kingdom is not of this world. For the kingdoms of this world are earthly and transient, and are based upon wealth and the power of the flesh, but the kingdom of Christ is not, as the Jews expected, earthly, but spiritual and eternal. Its resources and riches, too, are spiritual, as he showed by placing his throne in the heavens, where they are counted richer and wealthier who seek most earnestly the things that are of God, according to these words of St. James, Hath not God chosen the poor in this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which God hath promised to them that love him? He also ascended into heaven in order to teach us to follow him thither in mind and heart. Whereas by his death and resurrection he bequeathed to us an example of dying and rising again in spirit, so by his ascension he teaches and instructs us that though dwelling on earth, we should raise ourselves in desire to heaven, confessing that we are pilgrims and strangers on the earth, seeking a country and that we are fellow citizens with the saints, and the domestics of God, for, says the same apostle, our conversation is in heaven. Results of the Ascension the extent and greatness of the unutterable blessings which the bounty of God has showered on us were long before, as the Apostle interprets, sung by the inspired David, ascending on high, he led captivity captive, he gave gifts to men. For on the tenth day he sent down the Holy Ghost, with whose power and plenitude he filled the multitude of the faithful then present, and so fulfilled that splendid promise, It is expedient to you that I go, for if I go not, the paraclete will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. He also ascended into heaven, according to the Apostle, that he may appear in the presence of God for us, and discharge for us the office of advocate with the Father. My little children, says St. John, these things I write to you, that you may not sin. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the just, and he is the propitiation for our sins. There is nothing from which the faithful should derive greater joy and gladness of soul than from the reflection that Jesus Christ is constituted our advocate and the mediator of our salvation with the Eternal Father, with whom his influence and authority are supreme. Finally, by his ascension he has prepared for us a place, as he had promised, and has entered, as our head, in the name of us all, into the possession of the glory of heaven. Ascending into heaven, he threw open its gates, which had been closed by the sin of Adam, and, as he foretold to his disciples at his last supper, secured to us a way by which we may arrive at eternal happiness. In order to give an open proof of this by its fulfillment, he introduced with himself into the mansions of eternal bliss the souls of the just whom he had liberated from hell. Virtues promoted by the Ascension A series of important advantages followed in the train of this admirable profusion of celestial gifts. In the first place, the merit of our faith was considerably augmented, because faith has for its object those things which fall not under the senses, but are far raised above the reach of human reason and intelligence. If, therefore, the Lord had not departed from us, the merit of our faith would not be the same, for Christ the Lord has said, Blessed are they that have not seen, and have believed. In the next place, the ascension of Christ into heaven contributes much to confirm our hope. Believing that Christ, as man, ascended into heaven, and placed our nature at the right hand of God the Father, we are animated with a strong hope that we, as members, shall also ascend thither, to be there united to our head, according to these words of our Lord himself, Father, I will that where I am, they also whom thou hast given me may be with me. Another most important advantage is that he has taken our affections to heaven and inflamed them with the Spirit of God, for most truly has it been said that where our treasure is, there also is our heart. And, indeed, were Christ the Lord still dwelling on earth, the contemplation of his human nature and his company would absorb all our thoughts, and we should view the author of such blessings only as man, and cherish towards him a sort of earthly affection. 
but by his ascension into heaven he has spiritualized our affection and has made us venerate and love as God him whom, on account of his absence, we see only in thought. This we learn in part from the example of the apostles, who while our Lord was personally present with them, seemed to judge of him in some measure in a human light, and in part from these words of our Lord himself, it is expedient to you that I go. The imperfect affection with which they loved Christ Jesus when present had to be perfected by divine love, and that by the coming of the Holy Ghost, and therefore he immediately subjoins, If I go not, the paraclete will not come to you. The ascension benefits the church and the individual. Besides, he thus enlarged his household on earth, that is, his church, which was to be governed by the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. He left Peter, the Prince of the Apostles, as its chief pastor and supreme head upon earth, moreover he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and other some evangelists, and other some pastors and doctors. Thus seated at the right hand of the Father he continually bestows different gifts on different men, for as the Apostle testifies, to every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the giving of Christ. Finally, what we have already taught of the mystery of his death and resurrection the faithful should deem not less true of his ascension. For although we owe our redemption and salvation to the Passion of Christ, whose merits opened heaven to the just, yet his ascension is not only proposed to us as a model, which teaches us to look on high and ascend in spirit into heaven, but it also imparts to us a divine virtue which enables us to accomplish what it teaches.